Hello. 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 How are you? I'm good. How are Hang you? on. Oh. Okay. Everything's kind of skewer. Hang on a second. I'm trying to work this thing. <laughs> <laughs> the technical difficulties, so I'm sure this will all go swimmingly. I'm sure, I'm sure. Right, how's the weather for you down there? You look like you've got sunshine. Yeah, surprisingly. Uh, the autumn quite, hasn't quite hit yet. I think it's uh, still grabbing onto the last bits of summer. So I'll take Yes, cutting off from your life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How do you work your camera on this thing? I don't like being on camera, but I feel it's not fair if you're on camera. <laughs> so if you don't feel comfortable, that's absolutely fine. Doesn't need to be. <laughs> I'll just uh, I'll just use random images. I'll, I'll use a sock puppet for your bit. <laughs> <laughs> not the one with the teeth, surely. <laughs> oh, that one easily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The only proper one. But he misbehaves. <laughs> right, right. I need to quickly fill up my drink because I get very dehydrated. I can imagine so. Yeah. Well, I'm sure as a voice actress, you know that talking for too long can work up a thirst. Yes, I end up by the end of it sounding a little bit lower than usual. <laughs> So, I'm like that with um, the tenth Doctor. I'm trying. I'm doing something for Rassilon Productions at the minute as him, and Christ, my voice can't <laughs> last. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's fantastic. Let me know when it's out. Um, I normally see it, but sometimes I don't see everybody's posts. So please send me the link to it. I will. I will have to do that. It's not out yet. I'm having to do the recording in small chunks because I die. <laughs> <laughs> right. You'll be. <laughs> right are we ready to go yes excellent excellent um i always this is my first zoom in a while i don't know how to really introduce this um hello alia <laughs> hello jack <laughs> well i mean we've been talking in the dms for ages probably since around the community show started so it's nice to finally hear your voice live i guess <laughs> and likewise it's nice to see you and hear you um thanks for all the support as well and for supporting our entire community um and being a big positive light to us i've said a million times so <laughs> <laughs> yes feed my ego more more <laughs> Watch the brain swell. <laughs> yes. Right. So, I was this close to going into a Scottish accent. I can't help it. I can't help myself. <laughs> Just don't wear the wig again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. That was fun. <laughs> no, I, oh, this, yeah. Whenever I hear a certain accent, I always, my brain can't help but go, oh, do it. Give it a go. <laughs> and I'm like, no. You want to pretend me in a cupboard. <laughs> That's, I know that's how you record, okay? So I'm, I was only doing it to be accurate. I'm all about accuracy, you see. <laughs> Professional. Right. <laughs> Question one. <laughs> Off to a great start. Um, so what would you say, sort of in the online community, you would be no, most known for? On the online community, most known for? Did you say voice most known for, or...? Well, I suppose sort of in general, whether it be a, a voice acting role or, or part or whether it's just you on Twitter. <laughs> well, I talk a lot of shit on Twitter. So sorry, Tor. Um, <laughs> but uh, probably, <laughs> probably my voice acting. Um, it's really the only reason I went back on Twitter. So um I, I literally I started on the Amino and um, met somebody called Harry Gosling who was doing some audio dramas and uh, also a Kieran Noon who was doing uh, like his own writing and I, I made one of his audio things and it started there so I loved it so much I just had to keep it going um, and there you go so I would probably say yes it's the voice acting uh, definitely yeah Miss you. Uh, no, that's miss definitely you. how i came across you because i think in almost every single community show and this is episode eight this will be in 
you have had a mention in pretty much every single one, just based on how much you did. <laughs> you just kept popping up. And I was like, hey, who, who is this Alia Tori being all over the place? <laughs> well, it makes a change. Um, like the, me and the camera fell out a long time ago, so <laughs> we don't speak <laughs> at all. <laughs> So it makes it makes a great change um, to actually be doing a, a lot. Of, I class like, you know, the, the sort of non-paid work and the paid work as the same. It, it's work. It's my life. It's a job. And I love it, you know. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I don't generally turn anything down because I, if I stop, I feel like it all stops. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Well, on the uh, on the same lines as that, um, what would you say you find so enjoyable about doing voice acting in comparison to uh, on camera stuff? Oh, it's a challenge um, because let's put it this way: you're open to so much more. Um, when you're on camera, there's judgment about how you look, whether you're like five foot nothing or six foot ten you know um literally I'm a short ass so <laughs> I don't fit the dashing leading female um <laughs> I'm short I'm stumpy and I'm getting older and once you cross 25 you know generally in the film world they tell you to uh, take a hike so <laughs> well, um with voice acting I know it's pain in the pain in the bahookie but with voice acting you've got so much more variety. You can be anything, anyone, anytime, any age, um, any character. God, I've even done Peter Capaldi. Come on. <laughs> he would kill me Wait, for my Hold on. Where is that nice project and how haven't I seen it 500 times? <laughs> it's starting with a project called Michael, um, which was written by Kieran Noon. He's a very promising young Irish writer. Mm. And when I read it, I said, I, I have to turn this into an audio. And it was the first one I'd kind of ever done um, myself. And um, I narrated it as my own, but it was a 12th Doctor story. And I thought, I have to do the voices. I can't narrate without doing all the voices. So, of course, my Peter Capaldi came into question, and it's terrible. You know, it sounds more like Billy Connolly. <laughs> <laughs> so. It does. It does sound like Billy Connolly. <laughs> I mean, at least you've got a Billy Connolly impression <laughs> in the bag. There we go. Add that to the resume, to the spotlight account. <laughs> no such thing as bad weather. Only the wrong clothes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Sorry, Billy. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, on this, again, I'm leading these in very well. On the same lines as the impressions, um, you, you do a lot of them. That's how I came across you, specifically your Missy uh, I came across. But... I mean, how many do you think you've done impression-wise over the years? Oh, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, I think with, with Doc, Doctor Who-wise, um, as I said, I've even done Nardole as well, which is terrible. But, <laughs> <laughs> but with Doctor Who, it's like, I, I get contacted to do scripts. Do you think you could do this? And I've never done, even tried the impression before. And I'm like, should I say yes? Should I say no? I'll say I'll try. If I get it bad, please don't kill me. Um, what do you think? <laughs> you know, um, and generally I just, I take them on as they go. And I say, Missy's been the most predominant. Sarah Jane, I've always, every time I get offered that one, I panic because I'm like, please do Liz Sladen some, you know, some credit, <laughs> please, please. <laughs> and um, because I, I, I did get criticized for it once I've had people say it's really good. And then someone, I, I was a bit toothy once with it. And someone said it sounded more like Jimmy Stewart. So it came up. Part of it. That's an interesting um, combo. Ace is another one. I love. It. Yes, um, I had to do two in the same project, so it was like talk Sarah Jane talking to Ace. I had to swap between the voices. It was quite funny. <laughs> um, and then I think recently I've been asked to play the Rani. Um, so that's a good challenge. I quite like the villains. I've done thirteen. Um, that was challenging because I kept going Cockney, even though she's Huddersfield. I kept going Cockney. <laughs> like, no. I want to hear Cockney so... <laughs> words at Jodie Whittaker, <laughs> like a chimney sweep. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I know. Oh, geez. Um, and it was, it was like, it, it is, it's a mashup of accents. And especially if you're going back and forward, you probably start hearing voices in your head, you know. Um, and it's, oh, I can't count them now. Um, I think there's been about 
35 odd credits god i wish i was getting money for this <laughs> yeah <laughs> but, christ um... <laughs> somebody pay this one <laughs> <laughs> maybe I wouldn't be living off biscuits, pay me. You know? um, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's it's good fun, you know. And I'll stop there because I always I ramble too much. Sorry. No, <laughs> no, ramble away. Honestly, it's the best kind of answer you can get because in the edit, I can just sort of chop it up a bit and just make it even funnier <laughs> than it already is. Like, <laughs> like just you know, flashing up a picture of Billy Connolly just for the reference, you know, stuff like that. Rambling is the best when it comes to interviews. The worst thing you could ever do is go, yeah. That's it. <laughs> yeah. So what would you say? Yeah, no, maybe. <laughs> so what would you say is your most, um, not well known, you, uh, what you do the best, do you think? What would you say is your critical self is your favourite? The, the, my best impression. I say, I don't know how close I am to her, but I absolutely adore Missy um (laughs) she has so much energy (laughs) she has so much energy if you imagine me in my tiny closet right like my tiny little cupboard of a studio (laughs) and how much energy Missy has the amount of times I've maybe punched a wall (laughs) because I'm swinging (laughs) and I'm going wee um but she she certainly livens up a dull morning and she's just fantastic to play and I must say the villains you know you you have to work out what their motives are for being badass baddies Mm -hmm. and um and you know and Missy's kind of complex because she isn't really bad but she's bad but she's the doctor's friend but she's a total enemy and you know I, I love her wit and I love her um I just love her soul. She's wonderful. And Michelle Gomez. Oh, she puts Scotland on the map. Oh, she's she's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I don't know when it's... <laughs> That's the thing. There's like the smallest of delays. So I want to make sure I don't cut you off. But then that just leads to sort of an awkward moment where we're just like... Yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> Once again, I'm linking these like a pro. Yeah, you mentioned the cupboard, the famed cupboard under the stair. I, well, that's how I imagine it anyway, like Harry Potter just cramped in there. So what is your sort of recording <laughs> setup? What does it look like? Basically, I will send you a picture of it. Oh, it is a <laughs> it's an old cork, uh, coal cupboard. Um, I've got two entrances to this terrace house. It's not a big house if you think it's got two doors. Um, it's where they used to bring in all the coal and just shove it into this cupboard. And um, recently I thought my dog's next door neighbor's dog was barking and going off his head. And I was like, shut it out there, I'll eat you. <laughs> um, so I literally tore apart my house and I was like, I couldn't find an ideal place to record. And then there was this cupboard my fridge was sitting in. And if you imagine, it's about the size of a fridge. Um, <laughs> and um, I basically just put foam tiles on the walls. It's stone thick, so there is no reception in there. Oh. Um, <laughs> really, um, <laughs> You can't breathe in there. There is no air. Um, oh. So it's a kind of... Cut yourself some air holes, Alia. <laughs> yeah, no. um, it's a backwards TARDIS, really. It's smaller on the inside. Um, oh, yeah. And it's concrete. <laughs> solid concrete so um i do have a motorway outside so if i do cut air holes you will hear the motorway and i fight traffic all the time yeah. so every time i hear like a cut along i'm like no no i can hear it coming in the distance here it comes here it comes yeah Fuck. That was a i'm good like take. that with Sorry. planes <laughs> mortal enemy flying vehicles <laughs> Why is it I see you poking your head out the window with a sonic screwdriver at the plane and saying, Garcia, damn it. Honestly, it, maybe not outside the window, but I've definitely done that. Like years ago when I could film in my uh, my parents' <laughs> garden, I'd be doing what whatever it would be. And genu- the planes would just fly overhead and I'd just yell. I'm sure there's outtakes somewhere. Just be like, go away! <laughs> my neighbours probably thought I was insane <laughs> and they were correct. <laughs> well, you should definitely pretty much the same you should hear me in this wee box it probably comes out like to any other neighbor like (laughs) 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 oh god i can totally see that like maybe like your husband or your kids just sort of walking (laughs) past and like it's so soundproof you can barely hear it but as you walk past the door it's just like (laughs) (laughs) 
it's like Father Jack in his quarantine tent, you know, if you've ever seen Father Ted. Yes, and he's, a he's bit. And he's got this, he's got this uh, virus, and they put him in this, the hairy hands virus, and they put him in this quarantine tent, and normally he's really loud, he's like, drink, drink, drink. <laughs> and they put him in this, <laughs> this tank, and all you hear is, drink, she's <laughs> <laughs> so quite like that. Absolutely, oh my God. <laughs> Oh, I need to now make Father Ted the community show. If people don't know what that is, they need to know. Um, <laughs> do, so do you have any sort of voice acting or, or really just acting inspirations? Oh, yes. Um, oh, God, it's so hard to name. Acting inspirations, like, obviously, Michelle Gomez. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Lisa Capaldi. Yes. Uh, Emma Thompson. Yes. Oh, yes. Um, <laughs> Sorry, then just that name. Just... Mm. <laughs> I'm a huge fan of Assassin's Creed. So I absolutely adore the voices of Adrian Huff. And of course, you've got um, Roger Craig Smith, who is basically the voice of Sonic as well. And I mean, I came late to the voice circuit, That's really. Range. As I said, it was something I never considered. What? <laughs> Sorry, just <the laughs> going from Sonic the Hedgehog to Assassin's Creed. You can imagine in the in the recording booth, you guys a bit confused. Like, mate, it's the pirate one or whatever. It's just like, oh, you gotta go fast. Wait, no shit. <laughs> no, see, I, I love actors who can. <laughs> <laughs> this is I'm wondering whether this is too early in the morning um, and I love actors who are kind of um I don't chameleons is the best way to describe mm -hmm. them is that they can play anything any accents any voices they blend naturally into their surroundings and I I, I love actors that can do that and they inspire me to do that if you know what I mean it's like um especially ones who you know are able to to play with their native accents a little bit as well, play with their, I mean, their complete physicality when they're on screen. Um, I mean, as I say, most of them were screen actors as well. It's like you're talking Alan Rickman was a huge one for me when I was younger. Um, and I think the reason I kind of idolise sort of the more, more male characters is I feel they've always got more to do. They have more of an adventure. They have more bloody brilliant writing and sadly a lot of women are, are kind of cast as mother figures and you know and it's always the same two-dimensional character and I was like no but I don't want that I Is want that what these like guys Misty have do you know I love Misty because of that because essentially you know she's in that way she's genderless but she's also wearing this kind of very Victorian get up you know I love the Victorian period I'm a big fan of Mary Poppins and she, to be scary Poppins it's just brilliant um, <laughs> and she <laughs> she just she holds all of that because there's a moment um, you see her in World Enough in Time and she's it's just that moment where she you know she's is breaking completely from that totally insane woman to a very subdued broken thoughtful person and she's coming out of this um i mean she's complex she's coming out of this really sociopathic behavior almost and almost seeing the light to what she maybe once upon a time was before staring into the untempered schism you know and um you know, that she is, I, I, I could go on forever about her, so I'm not going to, but um, I, I love playing characters with that level of depth that you can really, um, I don't know, you can really get into them. You can find out what makes them tick, you know, their motives, everything, you know, their past, they have a history, and I love it when they have history. Um, doing a lot of short film and film, I found every character I had was very two-dimensional. They didn't have a past. I had to create a past. Um, they, they they were not a challenge in any way. There was no complexity. But with Missy, oh my God, yes. <laughs> you know? Oh God, complex describes her very well. <laughs> very, very well. Um, the anti-doctor, you know. Um, but oh, she's God. closer to the doctor than most people know. And it, it's like the doctor has equally a bad sight. Um, I did a, what was it recently, a, a week in a short film. I got bored and filmed it in my little box of a studio. And it was just improvisation is what would happen 
if the master regenerated to look identical to the doctor, he would have a hell of a lot of trouble. And um, there was part of that discussion was, as I've killed as many people as you have, and it was the doctor that utters this. You know? So they're both light and dark, yeah. and they're, they're both wonderful to play. No, that's that's very that's interesting. <laughs> Again, I keep hearing you keep mentioning things that I haven't watched, and I'm like, how haven't I watched it? This <laughs> <laughs> sounds great. <laughs> yes, yeah, boy. It's a point in your. Your. <laughs> as my is my whole thing is to show, watch, and show off different things in the community, and I've just missed everything. <laughs> no, you can't. you'll catch up, dear boy. I mean. Ha- I d- I shouldn't ask your age, but you're probably a lot younger than me. (laughs) I'm 57 years old, uh, (laughs) 58, coming up. No, 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 it's none of your business. No, I'm 22. I I don't care. (laughs) I'm young. Uh, I'm a wee boy. (laughs) (laughs) Got my whole life ahead of me, I do. (laughs) <laughs> well, I'm 40 next year, and they say life begins at it. But I'll be doing the the whole Jackie Tyler banner thing every year, saying, "No, I'm only 40." <laughs> you know what I mean? I says 40. <laughs> <laughs> I would pay good money to exactly. see that. Exactly. This is what I'll be. I'll be hanging on to it. <laughs> so, yeah, I've seen. You know, you you had me up on. So I will be honest. If it wasn't for lockdown. I maybe wouldn't have gone back and like totally, you know, Brett boxed it for months and marathoned yeah. the hell out of classic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because I grew up with this doctor. He was my first, but, and I remember him clearly. He got me into Doctor Who, you know, he was the first one I truly remember was seven. And I absolutely adore Sylvester McCoy and Ace, you know, I, I, I just love Sophie Aldrin. And, you know, they're, they're, they're just pure nostalgia for me. And I had to go back. I had to go, okay, where did this all start? Ooh, jealous. I jealous. Just had to show off just um, quickly. <laughs> I also broke my notice board <laughs> doing that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, but so going back with Classic Who, I had missed all this. There's things people talk about in the Whovian community, you know, and I, I, I'm sitting there going, I'm, I don't feel like a fan. I'm disgraced with myself. How could I be? Oh, I'm like that all the time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, you're young yet. You can catch up. So, yeah. you know, marathoned it all. Saw it from different angles as well. And see, sometimes when you even rewatch the stuff you're familiar with, mm. you spot things you never noticed the first time. Yeah. So there you go. I'm trying to think of <laughs> examples off the top of my head. <laughs> I can't think of anything. <laughs> Call myself a fan. Don't bring you. Don't bring. Could you see the smoke coming out of the ears as thought was trying to happen? And the nostrils, and I could smell bacon as well. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, that's yeah. I'm half bacon at this point. So, one more question before we get a little bit of fun at the end. I've got. Oh, don't think I haven't gotten something fun in store. Last question. You recently decided to sort of step away from a lot of the fan productions. So, and I was just yes, curious. I, I know the reason why, but I'm, I'm sure the viewers, the, the folks at home would be interested to, <laughs> to sort of know what happened because it is, it is both sad and something that probably should be said. Yes, it should be said. Um, you know me, I'm quite politically outspoken. Um, yeah. and so I probably won't hold back. But one thing about the community is I, I really want to say is, guys, everybody, stop. Just stop. What a time to lag out. Hello. Alia Itori. That's what I should have asked. Whether it's Alia Itori or Alia Itori. That would have been a smart idea. Hello. Who was that? Um, oh, on- oh, hello. Online. Hello. Um, hello. Can you hear me? So you <laughs> you lagged out the second you said stop, <laughs> and I thought you just went silent. Uh, but uh, you're back now. You're back. 
<laughs> so you may okay, have to um, repeat. <laughs> okay, where did I get to? Uh, you said, <laughs> everybody stop, and then it cut out. <laughs> right. Everybody, and I'll say it again, stop bitching. <laughs> you know, stop <laughs> fighting each other. Stop slapping your projects, each other's projects off. Um, I think what everybody here is doing is wonderful. You still got me, so I don't have to start that again. <laughs> um, what everybody's doing is absolutely wonderful creatively you know whether it's got a huge budget tiny budget whatever we're all doing something and not just sitting down and talking about it we are actually doing something for the love of Doctor Who and now I work closely with Black Glove Studio I was, I've been Black Glove Studios Sarah Jane for quite a while and the, the Rani as well soon um, and I've sort of I haven't met Chris in person, but I've spoken to him online quite a few times and um, like on Zoom and things and over various projects and things. And he has a lovely kindness and a nice innocence to the project he's doing just now. And it basically is to bring the brigadier back to life in a sense, is to give him a proper farewell, a goodbye. There was a scene that um, Nicholas Courtney was meant to be in, and it was in Sarah Jane's wedding, but Nicholas Courtney was far, far too ill to make the shoot. And Chris uh, had a dream one night, and he dreamt the brigadier, and the brigadier came to him in this dream. I know it sounds kind of corny, but I think it's quite sweet. Came to him in this dream and said, you have me for one day. So Chris kind of took it as a saying is okay I want to give the brigadier a proper goodbye a proper farewell one for Nicholas Courtney the actor and two because he never got the chance to have that goodbye and so he has been working on this project which does involve quite a bit of deep faith and people got up in arms about it and instead of knowing what the project was about and the true motives and the fact that Chris has actually had a blessing from Sadie Miller for the project he's had a blessing from um you know, John Leeson, I think, might be involved in it. I don't want to thing it. He's had a blessing from Nicholas Courtney's biographer as well. So I think it's absolutely beautiful. And again, as I say, the motives are lovely. They are, they're sound, they're meant with kindness. They're not meant to belittle or to do anything to damage Nicholas Courtney's reputation or the character and the brigadier. And I was quite surprised by a few people I've also worked with in the past, jumping on this bandwagon and tearing apart this project without knowing anything about it, some on moral high grounds. And I just went, F this, I'm not standing for this. This is bull, this is utter crap, right? And of course, you may have seen my rant on Twitter about yeah. it. Yeah, again, so you're getting very Scottish I, there. I, I can don't... feel the swears just building. <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm trying to hold back the swear. It could be worse. They could go Malcolm Tucker on this one. And uh, maybe a lot of leaps. Basically, <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying very hard not to. This is a community show. And um, so Rory, little I, Rory's watching Alia. <gasps> Sorry, Rory. I was very, <laughs> just beat yeah. me, beat me, honestly. Um, <laughs> but I was, I was very surprised by a few I worked with before, and I, I do have a good relationship with a few of them. And I, I literally have, have said to them, and I won't mention who they are at this moment because I don't want to bring them down. They have been apologetic. Um, I mentioned to them, no, as of furthermore, I'm not doing projects with you. You cannot slam another one's project. The whole core of Doctor Who is to be kind. These are our fan projects. These are projects, you know, we do for the love of Doctor Who. And, you know, we have that, we should be knitting together and helping each other. And Chris reached out to ask for help to complete this project. And instead of people going, hey, I've got these skills, I could help you. It was more, I want no part of this. And it was like, listen, this is, we are on an amateur level. We are not the BBC, but we want to make something that, tells a story and brings people in and you know um show the love for a show we all care about and to see the amount of bickering and fighting and bitching and nonsense that goes on it, it just ground my gears I, was like, I, I have had enough of this and I nearly left Twitter as well 
But there are some wonderful people in the community, yourself included, especially because you're one of what I would say is one of the linchpins that keeps us together. Um, You support everybody that is in the community. (laughs) You, um, You encourage others to support others in this community. You support myself, you know, there's been times I felt like throwing the towel in and if it wasn't for these fan audios, I will be honest with you, I'd have given up acting the minute lockdown started because I saw no hope for a future in it. So, yeah, I very nearly threw in the towel. I was at the worst point in my acting career, my acting life, and I just, I went, where is this going? There's nothing. Um, I'm at an age where roles are becoming few and far between, um, and especially good ones. And I nearly chucked it completely until somebody, until I say Harry Gosling was the very first. And obviously Kieran Noon with his stories was the very first. Um, That gave me the opportunity to say, to live a dream. And this is a Doctor Who community that that should be existing. One that helps other people in this community dream and live a dream of what they wish to do and want to be part of in their future. And uh, as I say, love Doctor Who since stage of two. So you know it's kind of it's a given we should be nice and sharing stuff instead of killing each other sorry i'm blabbing again (laughs) no no quite right i'm getting ready for a revolution after hearing that speech i'm ready to pick up some weapons and just yeah (laughs) carnage flags everybody (laughs) (laughs) i should have worn my pirate hat i've got it in the next room i I, I don't know why i didn't think to i'm an idiot (laughs) but um right so to get things on a slightly lighter note towards the end, I thought, as you are a terrific voice actress, I would give you three random characters, just, an, just a, a visual, and you've got to figure <laughs> out what they would sound like. All right. You, do you think okay. you're up for the challenge? Yes, I hope for yes. Go for it. OK, right. <laughs> Let me get the first one. One moment. <laughs> the first as a as a slightly you know a slightly simple one 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 community show members might know this guy what does he sound like hang on <laughs> let me clear the pipes <laughs> something a bit i've heard you do this before so he's a bit growly isn't he <laughs> well in my way i'm gr- i'm doing it against the green screen <laughs> like that's going to help yeah 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 the whole green <laughs> well no jack I am going to destroy your entire planet. Why? <laughs> because you... <laughs> it sounds like Why? a really grumpy Yoda. <laughs> <laughs> I'm green. <I> <laughs> he auditioned for Yoda. He didn't get it. He didn't have the ears, right? <laughs> yeah, he did. No, oh, he's still bitter about it. I hate George Lucas. <laughs> Right. I think, well, I think we've nailed that one. I'll put, I'll put Drashig to one side. He can, he can sit there and judge me. Number two. Now this is one, the next one is near and dear to my heart, Ellie. And I, uh, my family has given this one a voice. It is my dog. <laughs> Here he is. This is a picture of my dog. What's, what's my dog sound You're like, Ellie? <laughs> your dog always have its tongue sticking out uh not always but he he likes oh. to <laughs> so he likes to stick the tongue out a little bit puppy <laughs> <laughs> nothing like putting me on the spot here do a voice of the dog this is uh, what i like to do dog. for now the challenges know. no one should need to know what's happening everyone should be confused <laughs> at all times did I insult your doggy? What's your doggy's name? My doggy's <laughs> name is Fred, and he's an old Fred. boy. We love Fred. Fred is a good. Well, boy. Fred, Fred changes everything. He's like he's full Fred, and he's an old boy. Then he'd be more like this. Hello. <laughs> Give you a kiss. Come here, let me slobber all over you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's definitely true to Fred. There is no doubt in my mind. <laughs> he <laughs> slobbers like there's no tomorrow. That boy. And <laughs> there's, I don't know if you've seen it, there's a video, the, the, here's the voice my family have dubbed him, right? There's a video of a dog who's been dubbed over, really wanting, like, 
the sandwich that their owner has. And it's like, <laughs> is, it, is it the maple kind? I, I like that one. I like the maple kind. Because he's always begging at the table. He sat there like, I would like some food now, please. And that's just the voice we've given him. <laughs> it's just it's been that for years. Right. I have <laughs> saved. I have saved the hardest one for last. Right. There is one last oh, no. one. And I'm going to get it now. One moment. Prepare yourself. Oh, dear. <laughs> What's he sound like? It's an ood, though. They're really peaceful. Except when they get really angry and slobbery and go feral, in which case they're more like... <laughs> um, I am ood. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot be a serious actor right now with your hands on your hips. What do you mean? Like, this is totally serious. <laughs> Look how serious I am. <laughs> right, that's it. I'll have to backwards challenge you to do Shakespeare with that. <laughs> <laughs> now is the winter of my discontent. Oh, wait, no, <laughs> to be <laughs> or not to be. That is the question. <laughs> this stinks. <laughs> this stinks in there. Dude. This is a good look. Oh, I've got ears. <laughs> nah. There we go. <laughs> well, I think that challenge was a roaring <laughs> success. <laughs> oh, I can't breathe. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I was like wearing the mask. I can breathe in there. <laughs> well it's fun thank you for that. <laughs> you're welcome Look, this is something i like doing now i did it with doctor that uh, did uh, dw 2012 with then challenge i did it with james sutton with his uh, with the sonics and this is just something i'm going to do now i'm going to spring a challenge on everyone and confuse everyone involved <laughs> <laughs> Keep it fresh, Jack. Keep it fresh. Oh, golf, kill, go it. Mm, like fresh, fresh bakery smells. <laughs> fresh. <laughs> well, no, thank really, you, really thank, thank you, you so time. much, Alia. Oh, you're most welcome. Thank you so much for having me on the show. It's been a, it's it's been a, a an absolute honor. I don't normally do interviews because, well, I totally crap myself. But. <laughs> You know, well, uh, check your pants. A, make sure you haven't. I, I, that would be horrific. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> I'm nothing but nice to my guests. <laughs> Vulgar boy. <laughs> as much as I would have loved to come down to Scotland and uh, and done it in person, I I don't. That I've got money, none, no money, not not enough for the, for a fly out to Scotland. Right? <laughs> well dear we are artists and artists have no money this is the this is this is it unless you get that one job it's yeah. that one job or you just yeah. keep working you know yeah have no money no, no. <laughs> none at all <laughs> right see all those credits cool. are great fun but the bank balance is uh, scary <laughs> It sure is. Unfortunately, um, Michelle Gomez is still working, so there's not really much of an in for voice actresses to step in. Quick, kidnapper, quick. <laughs> They're done. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's the thing. As soon as I learned Big, uh, David Tennant was doing Big Finish, I wasn't like really happy about it. I was like, damn it, I can't sneak in. <laughs> and same with like Dudman. I'm like, well, oh, great. There's go there goes my in. <laughs> That's when you start sort of formulating evil plans, you know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you have to do the pyramid, Jack. The pyramid of evil. Fingertips only, and say it's or it's the Mister Burns classic. It's going all yes. Back. Right. Well, thank you, and I will. I will let you get back to your day. Thank you, Jack. And it's been a pleasure speaking with you and meeting with you. Anything. Of course. <laughs> a long time coming. We, this has been on the cards for a couple months. And I've finally, 
finally <laughs> gotten to your name on the list. So you won't do any more wiggy impressions of me then? That'll be fine. <laughs> well, I mean... I'm not going to say it's never going to happen. Never say never. <laughs> you know, a good joke to fall back on. If Look, if your name keeps popping up, I'm going to keep having a laugh with it. All right? Let me be me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you have a lovely day and I look forward to seeing the edit. Please be kind. <laughs> oh, I'll think about it, you know. <laughs> I'm not kind. I'm actually really rude and a bad boy. That's me. Totally. <laughs>